Welcome to Booktopia TV. I'm John Purcell and I'm here with Belinda Alexandra to talk about her new book, Sapphire Sky. Welcome Belinda. Oh, well, thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. I've been looking back through your back catalogue. Uh, it's a very impressive list you have. Oh, thank you. Um, the Sapphire Skies actually ties back to your first book, White Gardenia. Can you tell me a bit about that connection? Yeah, certainly. Um, with Sapphire Skies, it takes to, um, part in two uh, turbulent times in Russian history, uh, the 1930s during the Stalin era and uh, Moscow in the year 2000. And in the modern story, the protagonist is a young woman named Lily, who happens to be the daughter of Ivan and Anya from um, White Gardenia. Uh, she's a little baby that's born at the end of that story and she's all grown up and in Russia in Sapphire Skies. And just a bit of a backdrop on, I mean, I, I, I'm aware that you don't need to have read White Gardenia to go on Sapphire Skies, but um, it's highly recommended um, <laughs> to, to, to read White Gardenia because it's a wonderful novel. But back in Russia in the early, early times um, of the revolution, um, some people might not know about the, the, the civil war that happened around the revolution. We hear about the revolution, we don't often hear about the civil war. Who are the two different parties? Well, what happened there is after the revolution, you actually have uh, forces that are still loyal to the Tsar that decide to try and take power uh, back for him. And they were known as the White Russians, um, coming from the White Army. And um, so those uh, people were the people that were, you know, trying to restore the old um, order. And they were fighting against the Red Army. So that's the communists. So that was the two opposing forces. Right. Um, in Sapphire Skies, um, the story is based on uh, a true event. Uh, can you tell me a bit about that? Yes, um, it's actually I was inspired to uh, write the story after reading about Lydia Litviak, who was the first uh, female fighter ace, and uh, she was a Soviet um, pilot who was very glamorous and um, not the sort of person that you would expect to be a you know, vicious and aggressive fighter pilot. In fact, she was so frightening that many experienced uh, German pilots were afraid to go in the air when they knew that her call sign was up, up in the air. So that sort of inspired me um, and to, to research more about the women who fought um, in the air during the Second World War uh, for the Soviet uh, Union. And um, yes, so that's the inspiration, the, the, those women, and I wanted to create my own character um, because I also wanted to show what life was like um, for the Soviet people living under Stalin. And um, you have your own personal history. Um, it's very much, I suppose, part of your, it's tied up with your imagination, where your, where your, your creative force goes. It, it, it's sort of, um, with Waikadini, you used your own family's movement out of Russia China to Australia um, as a sort of a, a, a the inspiration for, for the book. Um, in this, is there any connection between those who were left behind and, and this modern story, or is it is it uh, like with someone going back to Russia to try and find out about their about about their past? Um, have you done that yourself? Yes. Look, I think that's a very interesting point that you're coming up with because I'm born in Australia of a, a Russian mother who talked about China because that's where she had been born. But her grandparents, you know, sorry, her parents, my grandparents, had had to flee Russia, um, their home that they were very attached to. So it came down the family line, this sort of almost mythical country of, of Russia that my mother wouldn't have been able to go to because of her family connections. And certainly that my grandfather, having uh, been an officer in the White Army, would never be able to uh, return to. So there was this sort of sense of a Russian community in Australia and then of course further back in China longing for this country that was theirs but they could never return to. And when I actually travelled there, of course when it was quite safe to travel there in the year 2000 which becomes you know a part of my research for um, this book, there was this tremendous sense that's really hard almost to describe of having been there before and it was like my heart lifted as I was walking through Moscow and going, I know these streets and I know these people, even though my mother hadn't been born in, in Moscow. Um, but it was almost like I'd taken my grandfather back there genetically, like the part of him that I carry in me was so happy to be returned home in me. It was an amazing feeling and it's really, uh, really stayed with me and, and definitely one of the reasons that I wanted to research and write this book. Well, one of the things that a lot of the readers will, will talk about and, and pick up when they read your 
the books, any of your books, is the amount of detail and research that goes into them. Um, it doesn't weigh too heavily. It's not like a, not like reading a non-fiction title, but um, all the way through as the story runs, there are details and dress and clothes um, in place that are, 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 right, are spot on. I mean, how much do you have to immerse yourself in the times to get that sort of thing right? Look, that does become very absorbing. Definitely the research is a huge part of my books. And I always say that I become smarter with each book because the amount of reading I have to do is probably equivalent to a master's um, degree. And then I have to create a story out of that. But I have to say I do love the research. So as well as all the you know um, historical research that I do, I really go about preparing for a book almost like an actress preparing for the, the part. I listen to the music, I like to read the novels that people were reading of the time. I try and learn as much of the language um, as I can because that's how people express them themselves. And um, I even learned the dances that people were doing uh, with, white, uh, with Wild Lavender. I learned the tango because that was a very popular dance. Um, in Paris in the 1920s and that's actually how I ended up meeting my husband <laughs> dancing the tango so I do all of that uh, my friends actually joke when I'm writing a book I start to look a little bit like um, that time period or the characters with um, golden earrings which is set in Spain um, I was definitely wearing more flowers in my hair and more ruffles in my dress um, this book I think maybe made me a little bit tougher a little bit stronger having read about these incredible women and the conditions that they they fought under so you're sort of like the uh, Marlon Brando under Lee Strasberg yeah. of writing. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I'm in character, leave me yeah, alone. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. Thank you very much for talking Thank to you. us about Sapphire Skies. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. Sapphire Skies is now available from booktopia.com.au.